Are you chronically low in vitamin B12? Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ask Dr. Paquel Show. All right, so today we want to talk about B12 and especially low B12. So there's many people who their doctor will test them for B12. It'll be low and they'll be like, okay, let's take some B12. Let's get those levels up. Let's eat some B12 or things that, that have B12 in them. You'll start to take it. You'll eat it, you know, and it's like, okay, then I go in and get retested and the levels are still low. Not only are they low, but you're feeling pretty lousy. So the thing is, is like, why, what's going on with me? You know, is this, uh, what, what, what is, what is happening here? And the doctor's puzzled and they're like, okay, let's, let's give you more. Let's up your dose. Let's increase it in your diet. And it just consistently stays low all the time. So then we start to, start to have to think of some different possibilities because vitamin uh, B12, it comes from meat. It comes from dairy. Let's actually bring that up so you can see it. Um, and it comes from all these sources. So, you know, we should be able to get it from these things, eggs, uh, and it's also water soluble. So you can't really get too much or it'll just go into the toilet. So, um, uh, you know, also it's like I said, despite taking and eating healthy, it's low. And then you can start to get these symptoms, fatigue, um, feeling tired all the time, skin pale. People are starting to say to you, hey, you know, you look kind of pale. Um, do you have an iron deficiency, something like that? Well, you know, these are the things to look at. Weakness, lightheadedness, your tongue feels swollen or painful, a numbness and tingling like in the hands or feet, muscle weakness, uh, problems walking, you're feeling off balance, unstable, maybe stepping incorrectly, heart palpitations, shortness of breath, visual disturbances, pins and needles. It's like you're walking your feet, you're feeling like needles going into your feet, even though there's not. Irritable and depressed. It could be anger, crying a lot. It's like, hey, this isn't me. Uh, headaches, yellowed skin. Actually, the skin can start to turn yellow. Eventually, even the eyes can start to turn yellow. It's called jaundice. And then you can get loss of focus and concentration, even memory, uh, constipation, diarrhea. There's mouth sores, mouth ulcers. You can start to feel delirious. Uh, you can start to feel paranoid. There's the memory loss, even up to psychosis, where doctors are now prescribing medications for you. And it's like, wait a second, is there something else wrong with me? So, you know, then, then we need to really find out, hey, you know, the B12 is always low. Let's look at something here. Now, this is what your doctors need to be looking at. And if they aren't, you need to request these tests. Do you have antibodies to what's called intrinsic factor? Do you have antibodies to parietal cells? Because these are causes of autoimmune pernicious anemia. A pernicious anemia, and that word pernicious means something bad is slowly building up. Uh, some bad things are happening. Uh, so, but pernicious anemia, so this is where your immune system is attacking the cells that make this intrinsic factor. The parietal cells are in your stomach. They're little cells um, that make this what's called intrinsic factor. And think of intrinsic factor like it is like a taxi cab that carries B12. It, it captures it once it gets in your stomach, carries it through your small intestine, and then delivers it, especially to the very end of the small intestine called the ileum. And if you have antibodies to intrinsic factor, yeah, you're attacking this. Now you can't taxi the B12 around or capture it. So it just ends up in the toilet. And then also, if you have antibodies to parietal cells, you can't manufacture the intrinsic factor in the first place. So you need to find out, do you have these antibodies? And if you do, yeah, we need to figure something out here because then B12 can no longer be absorbed in the small intestine. And here's the other side of that story is if you're like, hey, I'm taking more B12 then because I'm not absorbing it, then you actually can increase the attack. So your body will say, hey, just took a bunch of B12, a uh, bunch of intrinsic factors just got released, attack, attack, attack. And then you get this big inflammatory event thinking maybe it was something else or something you ate. Same thing if it's the uh, parietal cells. So you don't want to be taking oral B12 pills uh, if you have this type of issue. It'll just make you worse. Now, the other thing you're, you want to have your doctor test is some other lab tests. Not only those antibodies that I just talked about, but they'll also do what's called, typically it was called a complete blood count. And usually these indicators, MCV, MCH, RDW, these are telling you the size and shape of your red blood cells. Because if B12 is low, 
your red blood cells aren't going to function. You're not going to manufacture them properly. They're actually going to get larger than they should, uh, which is called a megaloblastic anemia. And that'll show up as a lot of these numbers high, and the, except for that one to be low. And so this can be a sign of a macrocytic megaloblastic anemia. Also, homocysteine levels will be high because you got to have B12 in order to make folate work that helps you get rid of homocysteine. So then your ammonia levels start to build up in your body, which is very toxic. Um, and also the test for actual B12 isn't B12. You don't test blood B12 unless you're practicing back in 1970. You run a test called methylmalonic acid. So that's the key test for B12. And usually, when do I see pernicious anemia, autoimmune pernicious anemia? I typically see it with other autoimmune conditions. Usually when you have one autoimmune condition, you usually have more than one. Very common. And we'll see it with conditions like Hashimoto's, diabetes type 1, myasthenia gravis, rheumatoid arthritis, MS, celiac disease, even more conditions than that. But usually it's all kind of uh, relative there. So what do you really do here? Um, basically, uh, when you have these types of uh, issues, you need to take your, you, you got to have B12. You got to have it to live. So it's pretty darn important. In fact, your DNA cannot function properly without B12. And this can result in some pretty horrible conditions. So sublingual form is going to be the answer. You absorb it under your tongue. Then you don't have to worry about the stomach at all. It goes straight into your bloodstream. Yeah, you can use the transdermal patch route. Some people like that. I'm not the biggest fan. Might as well just use a sublingual. It's easier. It'll go in faster. And you know, I think those patches are more expensive. Intramuscular injection. Yeah, if you're low enough, if it's bad enough that it's creating a lot of these more harsh symptoms, you want to get those levels up quick. So you may need intramuscular injection of B12. And you may have to do a few of those so it'll build back up. I mean, if you're extreme low, it could take you quite some time to eventually get your levels up. So very important to get that up. Now, the thing is, though, is you don't want to take the oral form. And here in a minute, too, I will put up um, uh, another video that we've done uh, before that actually talks more about B12 and dosage and things like that. So really be good to watch that. And then, um, you know, the, the key with this is this is an autoimmune condition. So you've got to start to think, what is driving this? Because this isn't a B12 issue. It's not a stomach or intrinsic vector or parietal cell issue. This is an immune system issue. Your immune system is attacking you and you got to find out why. Do you have heavy metals, chemicals, infectious agents? Is there something in your system that your immune system can't get rid of? So it keeps attacking and creates this environment for autoimmunity. That's more the direction that um, I would say to, to look at to deal with the cause. Now, let's say you tested and you got all these symptoms, but you tested and it's like, hey, I don't have intrinsic factor antibodies. I don't have parietal cell antibodies. You know, is this number one, another autoimmune condition or other differentials for this are, do you have MS? Is your immune system attacking your brain? Do you have lead toxicity? That can match, that can give you the same symptoms. Do you have syphilis? Yeah, it can match the same symptoms. Polyneuropathy, meaning you have neuropathy in multiple areas of your body. Or do you have this, um, uh, an issue where um, this has gotten so bad, it's now affected your spinal cord, which is called subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord. You don't need to really know that. But again, this can drive other problems or sometimes there's other problems that can be um, differentials, meaning they look just like this, but typically it's this issue here that we are talking about. So, all right, well, I hope everybody uh, got some great information out of that and watch this next video on B12 and I'll talk to you soon. God bless.